Well, it's been a long time. A lot of stuff has happened, mainly, you know, the holidays and everything. So I took a break then and heck, I was planning on getting back to it towards the end of January. I ended up with the flu. I'm still sick a little bit and that was five weeks ago. <clears throat> you can hear it in my voice. So anyway, well, we got the whiteboard going here and this video is about how many megapixels do you really need? Okay, so because um, the D800 has come out and um, and so people are wondering like now the D800 the Nikon D800 is 36 megapixels. What does that mean? 36 megapixels. The Canon 5D Mark II and 1D3, what is it, the uh, 1DS3 is uh, 5D2 is 21 megapixels. So what does that mean? Well, you know, I go back 30 years. I've done a lot of darkroom work. So let's start with film, okay? When I was doing black and white film darkroom work, and I was developing this film and printing out prints in my darkroom, making the best prints I could, when I was using 35 millimeter film, okay, I could reliably make sharp, 8 by 10 prints all day long. If everything came together really well on a regular basis, I could make 11 by 14s. If I got really lucky and things really worked out in the sense that like everything was absolutely perfect with not with a landscape, I'm talking about like a portrait, things like that. You could go 16 by 20 for portraits. So what, is, what, are, what are we saying here? Okay, the important thing to know here is your degree of enlargeability kind of depends on your subject matter and how much super fine detail you have, okay, or you need, okay? So, <clears throat> so with medium format film, and this is film I'm talking about, Okay, everything bumped up, okay? You could make 11 by 14s. I'm talking about like 645. You could make 11 by 14s all day long. 16 by 20s were pretty good. And bigger than that was like, yeah, starting to get sketchy. And I'm, ta I'm, I'm, I'm talking about perfection here, okay? I'm not talking about good enough. I'm talking about perfect. <coughs> or what I judge to be perfect, and I'm pretty picky. <coughs> so that cold's still with me. Okay. So now we switched to digital and then everything got weird, right? Because it, it was kind of different. It wasn't really the same. So we were shooting weddings with six megapixel cameras and eight megapixel cameras when I first switched over. And you know, what were we getting in terms of prints for weddings? For wedding work, for social work, you could make a good 16 by 20, okay? For landscape work, and eh, not so much. For landscapes, we were talking 11 by 14s. You know, and even then, like, yeah, you could make a good 11 by 14. 13 by 19 was kind of pushing it, all right? So notice how I am quantifying, hey, my board's slipping. Notice how I am quantifying megapixels and film formats based upon the print sizes that I can make. Because in terms of like the fine art quality print sizes. Because that's really what this discussion is all about. The bottom line comes down to, if you're just taking photographs to put up on the web, you can use a phone, okay? Get yourself a, a, high, a five megapixel phone and you'll have great pictures for the web. All right, it, megapixels is about print size, okay? So that, that's what you need to understand. So then we bumped up to 10 megapixels and things got a little bit better over here, not really a big change. 12 megapixels started to get somewhere. We were making, you know, the 16 by 20s were getting close for landscapes, okay? Eight, six, eight, 10 megapixels, portraits were fine, but landscapes at 16 by 20 were iffy. When we got to 12 megapixels, the 16 by 20 landscapes were, were, were almost there, almost there. And now this is with APS-C size sensors too, okay? But you know what? Even with your 12 megapixel D700, sorry D700 people, 
you know, it still just wasn't there. It was a, a, a tad better, but it still wasn't there for me, for landscapes. Portraiture was covered here. You could do 16 by 20s for portraiture for weddings, assuming you had good technique all day long. So this is where we achieved portraits. Okay, when we got to 12 megapixels, we were almost to the point where we could do landscapes. All right, fine art landscapes at 16 by 20. For me personally, when I got to 21 megapixels with the 5D, T, 5, 5D Mark II, landscapes to 16 by 20 became the thing. That worked for me at that point. All right? And that's what I've been shooting for all along. So, so where, what am I saying? When we go to 36 megapixels with the D800, yeah, I can already do what I want to do. There's no reason for me to go here. So, you know, now maybe you have other uses. And if you, if you, what I'm saying is, if you need a D800, you know you need it. Wanting it is a different thing. And hey, that's cool. If you just want it, that's fine. But if you need a D800, then you know you need it because you've already been shooting 21 or 24 megapixels. It ain't doing what you want. But I'm telling you, for me personally, and I'm picky, my 21 megapixel camera is now doing what I want it to do. My 16 by 20 landscapes are fine. Now, I don't make bigger landscapes than that. So, you know, if I start, if I, if, you know, but I, have my, I can't upgrade my camera unless I start exceeding what I want to do. So if I get a bigger printer and I start printing 24 by 30s and my D, D5, D2 ain't doing it, then I'll consider the D800. But I have to upgrade my printer before I decide to go to D800 because finally I'm where I want to be. Now, if the 5D Mark III comes out and they uh, give me more like the 7D handling in that camera, I may upgrade to that even if it's only 22 megapixels just to get the better handling. But that's where I'm at as far as megapixels are concerned for me. And maybe that'll help some people understand what they need for megapixels for them and put everything into perspective. So, okay, that's Ed with Funner Universe. Thanks, and hopefully we'll have a lot more videos coming out here pretty soon. Appreciate it. Have a good one.